Well, in the battle between Hollywood and President Trump, Hollywood has won a round at least. The president announced he'll be skipping the annual Kennedy Center Honors Award Show here in Washington. Traditionally, the White House hosts a reception prior to that event, but this year's honorees, Norman Lear, Carmen de Lavalade, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and of course Lionel Richie, said they'd either boycott the reception or consider doing so. On Saturday, the White House announced the president was backing out, just the fourth time a president has skipped the honors in 40 years. Dean Kane is an actor, producer, and director, and he joins us tonight. Dean, is this normally a political event? Uh, it's not normally a political event, but far be it from uh, folks in the entertainment industry to politi politicize a, a, a celebration like that. They've done it with the Oscars. They've done it with about everything. And, and at this point in time, it's turned... Hollywood has turned so against this president. It's so in vogue to be against him. I'm not surprised it happened. Kudos to President Trump and, and the Trump family for, for just stepping out, taking the politics out of it for now. But I'm sure he'll hear an earful about it uh, when, when the honors happens. I just, I just keep wondering. I mean, Hollywood's always been liberal, obviously. Music business, same thing. Most artists are, but art requires free thinking. You really can't be trapped within tight parameters and be creative. And I wonder if there's any thought in Hollywood about the effect this kind of groupthink is having on art. Oh, I don't think they think about it. It's so interesting. It used to be, you know, you'd be the rebel, you know, you're the rebe rebel, you know, you're rebelling against the ideas and this sort of thing. Now, yes. now your true rebels are those who support the president. So, so if you support the president and his policies, you are such a radical and what a rebel you are. Um, no, it's Hollywood is locked into a really strong group think right now. And anytime I get into a conversation about policies or what policies I might support of the president's, it's, it's immediately met with the most crazy vitriol. Uh, once we start talking about things, we find common ground. But on the outset, boy, it's just shock. They say things and they expect you to agree 100 uh, percent that, you know, Oh, the president, he's a Nazi, he's this. That. And I go, no, I, I don't believe he's a racist. I don't believe he's a Nazi. I don't believe there's any collusion with Russia. And they look at me as though I am uh, uh, an alien. See, I used to hear actors complain that you would get less work in Hollywood if you didn't toe the line. And I would always think, I'm sure that's true to some extent, but, you know, it's a meritocracy. Like, if you're really good, you're going to get work. Now it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, if you really came out for the president, would, could you get work in Hollywood right now? <laughs> well, I'm working still. I'm still working, and uh, it's interesting. You know, I don't support every policy of the president's. Right. I don't support every policy of my own. I mean, I, it's just, but it's crazy. If you like one thing or you come out and you're supporting him, you're, you're certainly aligned with that. I've been able to work maybe because I was established and, and I've been able to do things already, but I'm sure there are some forces at work that, that aren't real happy that I would say these things, which is kind of crazy because I, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything really that's that radical, and it's policies that I support. But, yeah, it, it can certainly affect uh, some people's work. And you hear... I mean, I, I'm on Supergirl. I'm on the show Supergirl, and I had said some things, and um, some people on Twitter were so angry that I had said some things uh, that didn't line up with the groupthink that they were screaming to throw me off the show. It's, it was really interesting. Of course, that hasn't happened, but I, I've never even anticipated that being a possibility. It's amazing, especially since Trump is by far the most liberal Republican ever to be elected president. I mean, by far. So I, you would kind of yeah. think, and of course, he was in show business for so long. What is it about <laughs> him that drives Hollywood people into hysteria? Well, I think the president is, a, is sometimes a very inartful speaker, and I think yep. he says things off the cuff, um, and I think that some of those things offend a lot of people's sensibilities. President Obama was a very, very, very suave, very smooth uh, speaker. Um, he sounded great. I didn't like his policies, but he sounded fantastic, and, the th and he had a great demeanor. Uh, president Trump um, doesn't have, as, as President Bush before him, wasn't a great speaker, and so they just, they vilify. You know, we're Hollywood. We're trained to be in front of the camera. They expect that sort of training and that sort of thing. And President Trump gives them truth that they don't want to hear sometimes. And he's, he's gruff and he's rough and he says things that, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in press conferences and on Twitter, certainly, that are inartful and uh, maybe I, wouldn't, I don't agree with uh, all right. the time, but it's the policies I like. And, and I think that's why they're lined up so hard against him. They really want him to fail. They really want to be against him. They do not want him to succeed. I, I don't understand that because if he succeeds, then the country succeeds. They're so threatened by him. It's, you really need to be a shrink to understand it, and, and I'm not. Dean Kane, thank you for <laughs> coming on tonight. Say. I appreciate it. And then good for both thank of you, us, Tucker. by the way. <laughs> <laughs>